Yo, what's up everybody? It's David Brodeur, AKA Brilli. And today I'm gonna to show you a walkthrough of my entire creation process. And with that, I'm gonna utilize the Kitbash Manhattan Kit, along with some light stage body scans to create this final image. What I wanted to do with this demo in particular was actually just walk you through though, how I build something from beginning to end. I didn't have a concept set out prior to even going in there. All I knew was I had these really awesome assets and let's see what we can make with it. So hopefully you dig it. Let's just jump in there and go. So I've jumped in here into one of the kit bash assets for the Manhattan skyscrapers. And I just selected one of the buildings that I want to focus on right now. I'm going to try to make this more of a graphical approach than doing something maybe that's super photorealistic. We've seen a lot of that. How do we put our own style in with these assets? So just sold out the one building and I changed the scale down to something pretty low because what I know I'm trying to prep for is I'm going to be building using the octane volume object. And with that, it's best to try to keep the scale of that box down as low as possible. And so scaling other things in your scene down. So let me just hop in here and let's get a camera set up. And then we'll try to figure out some interesting framing that we're going to do. So <clears throat> in the camera, I'm first going to adjust the focal length. I might try something like some telephoto. We can always go back in here and change this if we wish at one point. And now let's see if we can find any interesting framing on this building. And they, this one has a lot of really cool angles to it. Uh, you know, whether you're coming down uh, more towards the top or, or going up more towards the top or down towards the bottom. So there's a lot of really interesting areas. I kind of really dig this area right here. Uh, and since we're kind of adjusting our composition a little bit now, it is good to set up our settings here and our composition settings. Uh, I'm going to do 1080 by 1350, so something that's a little bit more vertical. And now we can kind of dial in a little bit more on that framing. I'm thinking some sort of framing just like this. And obviously, we're going to be able to go around and, and adjust this as we are building here still. It's not like this is just it. All right, so next thing is let's uh, start figuring out uh, a little bit of our lighting and then we'll start working in colors a little bit more so i'm going to bring over my live viewer here and just kind of adjust the size of this perfect and let's get that render go all right so now we've got our kind of frame up here let's also add in one of these octane fog volumes into my scene now i'm sure there's going to be placed well below here so i'm just going to say um my options update check and deselect the camera here that way i can have it locked up still here in my live viewer and just like that now i can expand this up i don't know if i need this kind of width obviously i want to try to keep this bounding box here with these voxels as low as possible so i don't just want to scale this up immensely you know i, I know kind of what my scene is here and i'll probably keep it at that and then I probably feather the edge here so I can have it maybe controlled a little bit with the depth. So the front can be a little bit more clear and it fades as it goes back in the space here. So we're creating that kind of atmosphere that has a, has a fall off to it. Might move this up a little bit. All right, yeah, maybe something like this. I'll probably adjust the height um, eventually, you know, save even more on render time because we don't need it to be coming all the way down here in the base. I really just want to design for what we are in fact going to see. And let's come in here and let's grab a light. So I'll grab an area light and we'll make some adjustments. So I'm hoping to make this very moody, almost uh, like a neo-noir neo kind of look. So let's bring this light back. Obviously this light is rather large and pretty intense right now. I might just scale the size of that down a little bit. Even bring it more over to the right edge. Yeah, something like that could be pretty interesting. Uh, obviously, it's a little overexposed, right? Um, but let's go back into our camera and I am going to turn the camera update back on because I'm going to mess around a little bit with this here. And 
in the camera imager. Let's turn that on. We can mess with the highlight compression, see if we get any thing back. We do. Um, I probably will keep this maybe around um, 0.5 area and maybe go into my light and maybe dial this down a bit. Maybe let's say um, 65. Maybe even more. Let's go 50. And in our light, I'm going to add a texture in here because I do want to get an atmosphere going. So I'm going to say um, and plug in an RGB spectrum. So hop right in there. And whoop, there we go. Where are you, RGB spectrum? Beautiful. All right, now that we got the RGB spectrum in there, I don't have 100% of the colors that I, that I want, but let's start off with kind of a, a red. We'll see, we'll see where this ends up taking us. Perfect. And let's go back into the camera now, and I might mess with, uh, well, you know what? Let's get a different environment in. Let's go and say a texture environment. I'm going to hopefully try to light most of this scene with my area light. So I don't know if I'm going to be using any HDRIs, but let's not uh, lock that in quite yet. We're going to decide that as we go. All right, so I'm pushing a lot darker, right? So I was going for that more noir kind of look. Now, I think the issue that I'm having right now, when I see pretty quickly with my lighting, I'm like, yes, it looks cool, but it's kind of, we're losing a lot of that detail on the right side uh, from too much light, and we're losing a lot of the detail from the left because there's not enough. Now, I do like its separation. I do like this gradual gradient, gradient and fall off, uh, but I think I'm going to pop out from my camera again. And let's just tweak the scale of that light overall. And let's maybe dial it in just a bit more. So we'll probably have to increase the intensity of it. Maybe I'll move it more into this fog area. Let's see if I can get it. This is kind of interesting. You can see kind of exactly where it's falling into here. Right there it is right there. So I'll just slide that back out and maybe adjust the scale a little bit smaller again as well. All right, so this is cool because you can kind of see now the difference in the reflection of the window, how it's picking up some of those areas right there. I could also just come in and see what happens if I were to rotate the building a little bit, you know? Maybe let's see if there's, oh, I don't wanna change it that way, just on one of the bands, there we go. Let's see if we can get something where we can peek at the front a little bit. Maybe there's some nice interest over here. I mean, that side's pretty darn cool as well. I don't hate how I had it though. You know, I think that's, I think that's really kind of interesting, but I would like to get a little bit of uh, light and information over to this side. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this light and I'm gonna copy it and paste it. And I'm gonna bring this up and fill in this area. So I kind of rotate this around, maybe won't make it go as wide. I'm gonna go higher because I just wanna grab maybe that edge. And obviously it's kind of in the way of the camera right now. So let's just say camera visibility off. I don't think there'd be any need to check off shadow visibility, but what the heck, why not? And let's maybe even scale this in even more. I might even get this closer to the building here. And I'm gonna hide the visibility of the volume. It's not really doing anything for me having that in there other than making it harder to see what I wanna see. And I'm gonna put this kind of at this 45 angle because I really just want it to be on the corner and maybe fade um, as it goes further back. So it's kind of angled how I'd like. Let's change the height of it. Maybe it went a little too extreme there. And let's go in and dial in the, maybe the power. Right, and so now you can see I'm starting to get some information in here, but mostly it's kind of starting to dip to black or dipping to something dark where we're not, we're not really seeing it all that well. I could remove the color from this. You know, maybe let's try something less saturated. Then it's kind of giving this warm magenta tone, white, uh, white lights, a little bit too clean for what we're doing. I wonder if 
I could split the difference here, right? Something like that's not all that bad. Let's keep that. And now let's go back in and I'm gonna hop back into my camera view. I'm gonna just save as I'm working here. Don't forget to do that. And the next thing I'm gonna take a look at is um, let's turn the update camera back on so we can make some changes in the camera tag. And let's get, let's get playful in here. So I'm not gonna ch touch the exposure quite yet, but the gamma, let's bring that down. Right, so now we're kind of dipping to that black now, but now you can see that we still see the windows on this side, but now I can come back in. I should label some of these lights. And we're gonna say, call this the fill light, fill light front. And we're gonna call this, this is kind of like a backlight. So I'll just call that backlight. We could call it main light. Let's do that, main light, because that's really driving the whole scene right now. And I might increase the power of this. Let's try like 40 on that fill light. Right, and that's gonna bring a little bit more of that information in. I dig that, that's pretty sweet. And maybe we mess now with the volume because this has pretty much just been kept at default. And so, you know, we could change, there's no, there's no color in here quite yet. You know, we can mess with that. We can mess with the density and things like that too. So let's see if I bring this into, obviously if I, the, 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 brighter I bring this up, um, the more intense that color is going to be. I can make this even more and more red. And bring this down. I want, I want the back of the building to kind of blend in eventually with the background a little bit more and have maybe just a little bit less sa sa um, separation between them. So let's see if I bring in some color here. Let's close out of that. Let's go back. And in the density, what would happen if I brought that up to 200? Let's go 400. And let's just turn the visibility of that back on. We can see uh, where, where we're kind of in. I'm not really noticing a ton of difference as I've increased the density up of this. So let's go back out and I'll undo the camera view and begin to move up the fog volume a bit. See what happens as we kind of go more inside of this. Honestly, not a whole lot. Let's compress this even more and continue to bring it in. Sometimes I'll layer these, so I'll get maybe uh, two of these, so I'll do a second volume. And I'll place this behind. And I'll just change the scale so they're not overlapping. So this one will be what's in front. And what I'll try to do is make this one less dense. And this one can be in the back. And I'll make that more dense. And let's take this main light and let's go even lower with the intensity of it. And I might increase the height of that light as well. So let's take that main light. I might increase the length of it vertically and decrease the width of it. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I'm getting some more interesting highlights up the side of the building and then maybe increase the power again. Let's go back to 30 with it now that I made it a little smaller. And let's get, uh, I'll take the same light again. I'll copy and paste it. And I'm going to call this our backlight. And you guessed it. Let's bring this behind the building and maybe increase the size. I'm hoping to get um, a more intense gra gradient back here. Now, obviously that's not quite the look. Let's go into our visibility and hide the visibility of that light. But now we're gonna mostly be able to use this so it's not affecting the, the way the building is lit, right? But providing some more intense light in the background here. And so now its position is going to really determine that kind of fall off of that color. And let's bring it to the top corner, maybe down a little bit. 
Uh, maybe increase the intensity. So let's go to that light power. Oh, too much. And we can kind of see that it is affecting the building a bit here. So let's maybe slide this behind a little bit more. Maybe even mess with the scale a little bit. Let's turn off that these fog volumes, the, just the visibility of them in my viewport here. And we see my cameras on this angle. So, um, you know, that backlight can really kind of do something like this. Maybe even rotate it angle it almost directly at the camera. So it's not on an angle hitting anything and just play with the overall size of that as well. Let's see, maybe bring this in. Yeah, this is kind of where we're framing up. Now you can see that where we're really able to like control this a little bit more. Awesome. Now, obviously this is uh, a little bit too intense, at least for my taste right now that I'm going for. But what I love about this is now we're getting some very much more strong gradation. So now I'll just come in here and the power is up pretty high. So let's drop that down. All right now we're going to get a softer look. And that's pretty nice. Now let's go back in to our camera. Let's turn on our camera um, update and go back into the camera imager. Might tweak the highlight compression, bring that up a little bit more. I'm also going to quickly hop back in. This is probably something I should have done to begin with. And let's see what it looks like with path tracing. Uh, be a little bit more like maybe bounced light through this. Let me just drop my samples back down. It doesn't look like there's actually a whole lot of difference, so that's good. But at one point, I might want to mess around with some materials and get some more specular materials in there. Um, let's mess with some stuff, though, in the camera again. And let's do some hot pixel removal. Let's bring this down. <clears throat> For me, I've noticed that I can get to about... 0.46 in the hot pixel removal without losing any kind of um, detail in my renders. So 0 0.63, 0 0.64, somewhere somewhere in there, um, or 0 0.46, I meant. Uh, oh, wait, I'm tap typing the wrong thing, although that actually looked awesome. I'm going to go back to that. Yeah, 0 0.46 in the, in the hot pixel removal. Um, and then this gamma, that's actually looking, it's actually looking pretty sweet at like point. Uh, four or five. Let's go like 0.5 on that gamma though. That was a happy accident because I wasn't planning on adjusting that quite yet, but that's exactly where I was, I was kind of looking for this. Let's also throw on a little bit of that special AID noise. And I guess we'll have to denoise volumes as well. Cause I do have my samples pretty low. It's only at like 300. Uh, that way we can see what that kind of clean render is at the end. And then um, I'll, I'll obviously throw some more samples on for the, the, the final render. Nice. That cleaned up really good with that D noise. This is looking pretty sweet. There's so much detail in these buildings and in the models that, you know, you do get this really great sense of realism, even if like you're playing a lot with the scene itself and manipulating that. Um, so I, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I might want to mess around with like if there's any other colors that we can do, maybe turn some lights on in a couple of the windows, maybe a couple of the floors, uh, you know, but this is this is kind of really on its way. Let's go into the post processing. I don't know if this is going to look any good, but like mess with like some bloom. Ooh, that's kind of nice. It gives it more of this ambient glowing effect too. Uh, I don't think I need any glare. If I did, I would blur the heck out of it anyway. Let's just. But let's put in this bloom up a little bit, not to where we lose too much detail, but where it adds just a little bit of something. And then go back into the camera imager. And I might even take this gamma down again, 0. 0.4, oh, 0. 0.46 maybe? Yeah, something like that. Uh, this is getting getting pretty cool. And this is why I just love to have assets like this that you can work with because, you know, once you pick up on a certain style or a look, you can repeat that success. So, you know, I, I'm making a series out of this. And, and so this is really going to going to work nice because I can swap out the buildings, change the lights, change color, you know, rearrange the composition a little bit and each time get a totally different look. Like, let's take this same thing and let's give it a little bit of an up angle. 
you know, essentially it's going to be the same exact render, but you can see that, you know, it's got a whole different feel now as well, which this is pretty darn cool as well. I kind of like, I like looking up at it a little bit. Um, now I, I kind of want to zoom in a little bit more because we got a lot more negative space up top. So maybe even something like this where we we're really filling the frame. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this angle. All right, nice. I like the up angle. I think that's kind of cool. All right, um, let's put this over to the side for a second. And I want to dive a little bit into this kit bash asset here. So let's go and select. Let's pop out of my camera as well. And let's select where these windows are going to be. So I can see we've got a few different glass materials on here uh, for different parts of the building because there's various glass on different levels. And let's find where this selection tag is. So it's not glass blue. There it is. Glass ion is the, the windows that we're kind of observing right now. And maybe let me just go back to the camera. I want to see uh, where we lock up. You know, maybe a, a whole strip like this right above this platform, this ledge here would be kind of cool if maybe some of those were lit up. I think so. Um, <clears throat> they are glass. So let's dive into the building. Let me see what's inside. I don't know if I've gone into this. Okay, so it's just hollow on the inside. So I wonder if I could build my own floor in here. This might be getting a little... A little tricky um, so I could put a light because we could see the light through the glass as it is right now but I don't want to see it through the other floors let's let's screw around with this let's go in and let's grab and we'll figure it out as we go along let's get another light so um, let's say another area light and I'll take this area light and make a heck of a lot smaller and let's bring it up. So this is kind of the main, this is that main floor that we're looking at, right? Right below this edge here. I'm gonna put my grudge shading with the lines on. There we go. That way it's a little bit easier to see. Let's adjust the height of this light again. Bring it out in front of the building. And now we can kind of lock up so it's almost the exact height of the windows and let's change the width of it here. I think this light needs to be rotated 180 degrees as well. And let's put it on the inside. This will be interesting to see what it does. All right, let's hop back into our render and let's get the live viewer going. Well, that's pretty epic. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Now, I don't know why a few of these uh, windows are appearing black, right? Those three here. I don't know, maybe if it's a different material or something, but they're they're definitely not showing up. If I move the light back, I get, um, well, I just got a totally different result here. Although this could be, you know, gl using the, the glow that I've got going right now. Let's, let's change, let's change the height and see if any of the other windows function like that. Let's go up a little bit. Yeah, no, it's just that level. I'm not sure uh, what that might be. So let's hop out of that camera and let's see. Let's see if there's something different in John. Oh, that's because that's the building design. Um, they don't, those aren't windows. It's only like a half window there. That's kind of cool. I dig that. So. It's not some kind of mistake that I was making. It's actually how it was supposed to be designed. So let's do that again because I like I like the variation in it. And let's bring that back in that light. And let's go back into our camera here. I wonder if I can move this back because I mean, I don't want it to go too much into the upper floors, which it will probably start doing. Yeah, if I move it back. So let's not do that. And I mean, it is rather intense right now. So let's just like go with half of the power of that light. 
and let's mess around with this too let's say let's put it uh rgb spectrum on this as well and let's give it a little color let's do some something um complimentary here or maybe close to let's see what a little bit of blue we might have to might have to pump that to counter the other effect of the the volumes have that reddish tone to it our other lights have that reddish tone to it and i might even need to intend uh, make the power go up again to maybe help bloom that area out this is where that post-processing some of this glare might work let's go even more intense on this let's Let's bring up that saturation even more and let's go like 300. Now, the only problem is the brighter we go, the more the color that's going to be removed in there. I don't think there's really a whole lot that I can do about that. I know I could mess around with the temperature a little bit. That's going to bring it warmer. I don't know if I if I bring the Kelvin temperature up. Yeah, we get some of that blue back. Maybe we can reduce some of the intensity because it is getting... A, a little bit too overpowering, I think. I think this would be a this would be a, a little bit of a challenge to where, you know, it feels bright and intense, but not not too overpowering in the scene. But I would like to have a little bit more glow from that area specifically. So I wonder if I can control the cutoff here. and maybe increase that bloom yeah there we go look at that now we're getting now we're getting some nice glow in here and it's not just overpowering from above let's see if i do some glare yeah some glare now the glare i don't want like the streaky glare so i'm gonna say because i'm trying to make this feel like we're in like more of a foggier environment so let's take the glare blur way up and Let's go into the camera imager and I might, let's see with this highlight compression. Yeah, it's getting just a little bit oversaturated red back here. So when I take this highlight compression up and down, you can see really mostly it's, it's affecting that top right a lot. Obviously it's affecting all my lights, but that's kind of a big spot. So I'll take that down. I don't know if I want to mess with the exposure a whole lot, even though I, I know it will take that and that really harsh intensity down that's happening back there, which I do want to take and reduce that. But then I wonder maybe if I increase the gamma. No, I, I like it getting darker over here. So I'm going to bring this back up to one and maybe on that backlight, I just bring the intensity down a little bit. So maybe let's try 40. Let's try 30. Nice. So although I like this, we're going to call this uh, window lights. Although I like that it's getting broken up here by that shape of the window, I kind of want the light to be up higher. I want our eyes to be moving upwards, you know, especially on this up angle that we have and not being pulled down. And right now it is kind of pulling them down. So I'm going to move this up maybe somewhere in here. Let's see if that feels a little bit better, bringing our, bringing our eyes up more. And maybe it feels weird that <clears throat> it doesn't go the whole expanse. So expand that down just a little more. There we go. Now it goes the whole length. But this is where you can really begin to art direct. You know, it's like, I mean, we're doing one strip across the whole floor. Maybe that's, maybe that's too much. Um, one part of me wanted to make kind of a floor here. I think we're going to do that. And that way I can have it like fall off, like more like a gradient than being so harsh the whole way. So I'm going to pause this and let's see if I can set something like that up really quick. So what I'll do now is I'll take a cube and I just made it a child of that plane. So it took on the parameters of that location of the light. Let's hop out of the camera here. And let's navigate towards that cube. 
and our light strip is right here. So I'm going to just bring, whoop, not the lights, the cube. I'll reduce the overall height. Doesn't need to be all that big. And I'll just bring this up past the window area and our light can be brought down just a little bit there. So it's in fact locking up in the windows. And now this cube, I'm going to keep it uh, merging through the geometry for now so I can see it. And I will increase the length of it here. Uh, these are all 90 degree angles, so that's helpful. Maybe expand it down just a little bit more. I don't know how perfect it needs to be yet. And expand this width, the depth of it. You're just going to have to make sure it's not going through any areas, other areas of the building. And I'll do another one and I'll move this below the windows. And now back inside. Perfect. Okay. So essentially, right, if we come in, I built this very cheaply. Um, I might even want one to block the front windows. This one can be kind of hidden a bit more. So I'll take another of these rectangles of my walls and I'll just build this one up vertically and jam it in over here and boom there we go okay so I'm hoping now that maybe that's enough I don't know we're gonna play around with it and let's grab this window light and I'll come back in here and for this window light instead of it being this close I can move it back and I can rotate it. And I'm basically going to rotate it until it breaks on the right side, right? So it's coming out right there and voila. So just like that. Uh, so now I'll be, I'm, I'm assuming I might have to go a little bit more extreme on it, but what I'm hoping is that now the light is going to be more intense on the right side and then kind of fade as it goes back. So let's try this out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's definitely doing it. Now I can see the top edge of the light kind of disappearing. So I might have to offset that. And now that it's moved further back in space, I might have to move the light up a little bit since we're looking at it from this kind of extreme up angle. Might even have to just increase the height of it. Be a little interesting. And, but now technically it doesn't even have to be this length anymore either, right? I could go less on the length and just move this down. Now you can see it does in fact fade even more. I really dig this. Now we're going to need some more samples to kind of fully realize that. But I think this is a little bit less intrusive to our frame. Let's bring that up even more. So I'm getting less and less of kind of this fall off here that I was hoping for. I might rotate this and move it back just a little bit more. It's breaking through the building there for a second. Um, I can even make another copy of this, right? And move it down and go to the, another copy. So I'll say window lights and I'll call this, uh, I'll call this a fill as well. Why not? And maybe reduce the intensity by like 50% here. Maybe even more. Let's go like 25. Right? And so now you get this really kind of epic gradual fall off. Let's pop back to our other camera here. Yeah, I like the up angle. I think that's a good adjustment. I'd like to see what happens if this secondary wall that I put up there to stop it from going to the front windows. So it looks like it doesn't even affect those front windows at all. But <clears throat> I wonder if it would be cool if it did wrap around a little bit. So I'm going to pause that render here and let's, let's get out of the camera and let's see if that's a possibility. Let's go back inside the building. Yeah, so this cube two. And let's take this window fill. And I'll make another copy of that fill. We don't need this to be anywhere near the length that it was before and rotate it. 
10, just like that. Let's bring it right in there. I don't think it's intersecting through anything. Then we'll have to go on an angle like this again. So that way it can be more intense on these on the front corner windows. And as it proceeds off in space, it'll be less intense. It's got a further distance to kind of travel. And let's hop back into the camera and let's get the live viewer going again. Sweet. Okay. Um, for this one, I'm going to call this like, I'm going to call this windows fill. I'll call this front and let's increase the intensity on this. Let's go like 40. Cool. Let's go a little bit higher on the intensity. Let's go like 55. Perfect. I really like that. Now we have a kind of an unobstructed view right now to the frame. Well, I wonder what it would feel like. Let's readjust this. I wonder what it would feel like if we had another building in here. I think I could probably just take, let's see, I mean, take this same sky, skyscraper. And if I like it, I can get a different building if I want. And I can duplicate it. And let's go and get out of our update camera. And let's just reposition one of these. So I'll take this new skyscraper from the Manhattan group here and Let's bring this closer to the camera. And let's see if we can get it out from, well, now it's completely out of the camera view. Who knows, I'm the, the telephoto lens I, I'm using might be a, a bit heavy handed. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, maybe scale this whole thing down. Maybe rotate it. 90 degrees here so we're, we're seeing a different angle on it all together let's rotate it 90 and bring it down i don't think i mind if we see the the top of it i think it's not breaking into the frame quite yet there it is it's in the bottom left now it is rather dark over in this area I think I'm fine with it down at that level. Let's see if I can move it in a little bit more. I might want something that's not a skyscraper anymore, you know? Um, and like, I think something like this could be, could be pretty cool though. And I might make some materials on it so it's not really reflecting any light. And it, it just kind of like falls off into black. Well, actually what I could do is I could put an octane object tag on here and we'll say in our light so i'm not sure which light that's going to be i have a feeling though it's probably going to be both of the uh, fill light on the front and the main light though so both of these um, light pass id is one let's just change this to two and then let's go into that octane object tag and let's say object layer enable the light pass and let's disable two. Let's see if that, yeah. So now it's just kind of like a silhouetted shape. So I might, might go back into this Manhattan group and grab a building that doesn't come to a point as, and, and put it in here for like a little bit of a foreground object. Let's see if now that at least we have this new skyscraper, like what about putting it behind? So it's going to just be a kind of darker object in my scene here, right? It's off in the distance. It's not really a whole lot visible. I might've gone too far back with it. Well, that's definitely in the front. This is interesting to play with because I don't mind cheating some stuff. Like if they're intersecting at the bottom, right? It's just really what the image looks like to me right here. But having, having something back there kind of stand out is, is pretty interesting, I think. This would be a lot easier, I think, actually, now if I just hop back into the camera. Right, we can see that's where it is. I think it's, I don't know if there's enough negative space to, to demand this right now. But if I move it down in Y to where I'm just kind of getting the point... And maybe move it back just a little bit here. 
I don't like how it's forming kind of a tangent right at the point. So I either move it down more or up more. I think down more is the way to go because having that negative space is kind of cool. But now this get, gets and adds an additional layer of depth. And I think if I do one in the foreground, that could be just like the icing on the cake. And so you can see as kind of I'm working, I'm, I'm slowly building the composition. And as I'm coming along here, even like the color palettes and tones and stuff like that. Um, and you definitely don't need it as detailed as a building back here, but I mean, these assets are running really quick, so I don't think it, it, it matters. Uh, so let's go look for a possible other addition to this from the Manhattan kit. Okay. So here we are with all the awesome assets in this kit bash Manhattan library. So, uh, you can see here, uh, I've got what's called clipping. Uh, and that's really just any software's way of reducing um, scene scale and file size, right? <clears throat> to make it more efficient. Uh, so for something like this, which has got such a massive expansive library of assets, we're just gonna change the clipping here uh, from medium to large, and we'll be able to get that back. All right, so as I was mentioning uh, in the previous window, basically what we wanna do is I, I, I want something that's just not a pointy skyscraper maybe a little bit more blocky um you know something like one of these buildings back here might be pretty good what's this one off to the right i kind of like kind of like this one right here um i said off to the right off to the left uh this building here so let's let's snag this one i think that'll that'll be cool like it's got enough little things happening on the roof too I think it's going to be a pretty interesting look. And uh, I'm just going to straight up copy this and we'll paste it into the uh, the scene that we've got. All right. So pasted that into the scene. Here we go. I don't know where the position is going to be yet or the scale. So let's just hop back in here and we can start to make some little fine tune adjustments. Something else I did was I, I changed the scale of this building, but I also uh, deleted the textures because I just want this to be kind of like a silhouette here. I don't really want to catch anything. I don't want it to be like too distracting in the scene. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit. Let's see. I don't even know. This might be too much. I might want it to have and take on even kind of smaller scale in the foreground. We will find out though. So in here let's get a material going so i'll say let's hop into the live viewer we may as well kick the live viewer off too and and even with no material on it it is pretty interesting here but i think i would like to have it a little bit darker um and and you know i mean i keep going on the left side maybe it makes more sense to have it on the right side to have some kind of offset and balance here too so let's try that let's take this and let's bring it in and let's move it to the other side now i might have to scale this down a little bit yeah this could be interesting let's move this back over in the x value maybe even scale it down some more Now there's, it's taking up quite a lot of real estate and there's not a whole lot of information that we're like giving. I don't know how much it's helping us right now. I might scale it up, right? Scale it up like this and maybe move it off the scene a good distance. So it's just barely hanging in to that composition. Maybe, maybe scale this whole thing down a little more. Yeah, I mean, it's growing on me. <clears throat> I, I kind of want to see now what this duplicate skyscraper I put back there will look like if I move that more into the light as well. Let me see if I can do that. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this one again. And let's see if I can bring that back. I'm just going to slide this over for a second here. And bring it... Okay, so bring it back this way and then maybe on X, yeah, like something like that. It might be too far moved back. So let's see if I bring this up in Z and now 
back over here. Now they are just straight up intersecting. Um, I do want it further back, but let's see how far back I can go. Oh, and, and actually <clears throat> I'm probably going to change this because now it's interacting with my backlight, right? So I want my backlight. If I change this light pass ID to two, you know, now it's not interacting with that backlight. Now it's just kind of like back here and maybe, yeah, I mean, this is cool. I don't want it to be the same building as the one on this side. But I think maybe the location is pretty good of it now. Yeah, you can see it back there, but it's super subtle. I could probably get away with it being the same building. There's no real reason to make that happen, but maybe scale that up a little bit. Like what's the what's the perfect amount? Let's move it closer and maybe a little bit more on an angle there. We are taking away a lot of that glow, not really digging that. Let's uh, let's scale this. Let's scale this way down. It's a good idea, but I think since that glow is coming back there and I don't have a ton of negative space with the framing, <clears throat> that one's a no go. We'll delete that. I'm getting pretty happy here with how this looks. The only problem I'm still kind of hung up on on this building down in the lower right. And it's just because it's so black and coming in and interacting right where this light is that I feel like it's kind of pulling our eye too much down in our scene. Although I really dig the idea, maybe I, I just need to change the scale. And hopefully you're enjoying kind of like working with me here and, and hearing just how I kind of problem solve out loud. I think it's, it's fun sometimes to hear and, and see how an artist is walking through the decision-making process. So hopefully you're digging this uh, kind of new form of tutorial that, that I'm doing, at least for this, which is like, hey, come like explore the process of this with me. Now, some of this stuff on the roof, the only downside to it right now with the angle that I have is it's making it so I'm kind of not understanding what it is you know what i mean it's like it doesn't it's not really recognizable as a building with how i've kind of framed this up currently but i do like this foreground element that i have placed in here we scaled up a little bit more let me put a material on it so i might go since it's since i know it's just like a default shader that's on there now i'm sure i could just use um let's do a glossy material and let's just keep it white and I'm going to want to put some roughness on it if anything even shows up, which uh, a couple little specular areas are. So let's add some roughness to that, some significant roughness to soften any of the sharp reflections out. I might even increase the index like 1.7 and have a lot of roughness on this because I don't want any sharp highlights. That's interesting. I'm going to try something else. So I'm going to try something crazy here. I'm going to do a diffuse material. And in the diffuse material, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, and I might be able to mix these together if it's not the first look I want, I'm going to do a black body emission. And watch how nuts this is. Just say surface brightness. Let's throw this on the building. It's going to be really weird at first. And let me take the emission really far down even more even more and i hope you can see what i'm doing here you know so i'm basically using this as a way so we can get a little less uh darkness down at the base um, but i think i need to move this object this building here so i need to kind of move it a little bit more over and maybe a, a one more Mm, no, nope. up is not it. Yeah, I don't think this building is going to work. It's, I'm, I think I'm really close, but I think with this composition, I think removing that right now is building kind of a real strong, powerful look. I'm going to do a bunch of these, though, and one of them, this building, has got to stick. Um, what I was going to do, just to finish the thought, too, you know, I was going to create possibly a kind of mixed material, and in that mixed material... I was going to blend 
the you know, the light and just the diffuse white version here. So let's open that up. So we'll throw that in and we'll throw the glossy material in. And then I was going to see if I could kind of blend between them. You know, I've got this flow texture. Um, obviously, at, you know, the lower I get, the less of that illuminated version that I would get. You know, there might be a nice little splitting of the difference. So we just get a little bit of a read here that that's a building, but not a whole lot. This might be a good use case, though, for a top that's got a little bit more obvious of the of a building structure that we're kind of aware of uh, that's less a hard to I'll try one last adjustment and then I'm giving up on this which is moving this over even more in X and maybe because um, I'm like I it would be really helpful to see the corner of this I just don't want to take too much away from the other building which is what I'm kind of getting into so not this composition is what I'm going to decide. I, I feel like we're, we're, we're right there. We're really close to, to having something that is exactly what we want. But I think on the next one, we'll get some foreground objects in there too. Although with like this last little tweak, I'm not too disappointed with that. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep this. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Uh, let me know what you think after this is done and you watch this with the building or without. I don't know. It might be in there for the final. It's just slowly growing on me. So just like the last scene, I made another one because I'm making a series here. And with this one, I wanted to use and set something up so I could use one of the light stage asset packs here. And uh, I love this one, Subject 42 here. I thought this would be like a great fit. And so the cool thing with the kit bash kits is that, you know, I just like modified this one a little bit. I was like, you know what? I need kind of a platform for a character to stand. And the light kit, um, assets or the light stage assets rather are perfect because you know i could set something on it and you know, simply just download it but it's almost a shame for me to use such a high detailed thing because i just want to silhouette it in this uh but i don't care i really love the poses as well and so i think this one will be a really good one for this scene so all i simply did is uh you can open up your octane live viewer and to import them is really really basic you just say import orbix and then locate that download and this is how it comes in. And all I had to do here, uh, I needed to scale it down uh, a lot because remember I scaled just like I did with the other scene, this scene down as well, uh, in order to keep my volume, fog volumes kind of smaller size and I had to scale them up massive to fit the scene. And uh, just like that, yeah, I threw them in here. So let's um, take a look. And this is what the live viewer did. And so I separated the two kit bash pieces just with a simple bull object, nothing like all that crazy. And just like textured the base and uh, the top and then threw a simple plane back there. Now I did try a couple other things. Let's get the live viewer going so I can just show you. Cool, so I'll just like click a couple of these on so you can see. I decided not to go with these for the final though, which are really just some kind of like neon lights that I placed around the scene. But I thought it just looked better with just the one that highlighted the character, kind of positioned her in the right spot, and uh, and that's it. So I hope you all like this kind of like training. Uh, I'll try to mix it up a little bit, but definitely mention in the comments below if you would like to see more of this in the future where it's more of just kind of like an artist walkthrough. I know I like watching sometimes uh, some design training, educational stuff where you just get to see an artist work and their workflow. I didn't like pre-plan any of this stuff. I just kind of came up with it on the spot and built it as I went along. And so if you like this kind of stuff, I'll definitely do more. Let me know below. And uh, thanks again for watching. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining. And like I just mentioned, if you dig this kind of video, I'd love to do more of them. Drop it in the comments below and I'll make sure that I do more walkthrough process videos with you as well. Till next time. Peace.